Ooh, this is an ugly one today. My hair is crazy. Yeah. My hair is ugly is what it is. <laughs> no, it's not. I'm sorry, people. It's a little frizzy. <laughs> uh, today's title is I Don't Like My Stepkids. <laughs> and that's coming up right now. Thank you so much for joining us on the Perfectly Blended Podcast. This podcast is for blended families, for couples that want to strengthen their marriage and want a brighter future. Perfectly Blended exists to break the stigma of divorce, drop the shame and guilt holding you back, and equip marriages to thrive instead of just survive. We believe all that is possible in this life is based on the power of Jesus Christ and his ability to restore us fully. Let's dive in. So, so. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't like my stepkids. No, that's actually not true. Not for me. It's not true. But we have heard it. Uh, we completely understand it's been it. Going around a lot, it seems like. It's been going on a lot, lot. A lot of those Facebook in groups, so it's like, gotta stay group. out of them. Yeah, but even in our own group, you know, or we've had, not yeah. that's posted in there, but we've had people reach out to us just saying, you know, we're struggling. They're struggling with their spouse getting along with their kids, which yeah. is, you know, their spouse's stepkids, obviously. So you, we thought that this was an appropriate topic to talk about. So definitely, definitely, definitely. So if you want, you can keep talking because I need to share this and I haven't done that yet. So I thought it would be appropriate to talk about because a lot of spouses, Josh and I have shared this in many, many, many of our episodes that anything to do with your life, if you're married, it all starts with the marriage first. It all starts with the marriage first. Oh, Steve. You have to pray about things, put God at the center of it. And I know that's easier said than done, especially in blended families, because emotions are so high. When you are in a nuclear family and your husband screams at your kids, you don't get the same type of feeling like it's their dad, you know, it's their dad, whatever, you know, type of thing. But when you're a mama bear and your husband, their stepdad starts yelling at them in that way. It's like, you know, type of thing that comes out. So this is definitely a hot topic to talk about. And there's some hard questions that you need to ask yourself. Yeah, for sure. I think, you know, it does come down to it. And I think a lot of times it's hard for us. So I was talking to a friend today on the phone and I was talking about like, it's really weird. We have expectations and we always, our expectations are always weird for blended families. So, and your expectations change over years, but in the beginning it's like, oh, I love her so much. Like I'm going to love her kids because I love her. And like, we have all these weird expectations and that's just not always how it is. It's mm -hmm. just not always that way. Now, is there things that you can do to make uh, the family process much better to make these things work? It's not always doom and gloom. There is ways to make it work. There just is. And these are the hard things we want to talk about today. It's like, okay, so what things can we do? You know, if we do feel like I don't like, you know, I don't like your kids or you don't like my kids, like why? Like, what can we do about that? There is things that we actually can do about it. There is things that you can take personal responsibility for in your family, in your blended family, and start putting it into play. And it's hard stuff. It's not easy stuff. So, you know, setting your expectations right in the beginning is an important thing for blended families just in general. I was reading a, a Ron Deal blog today about that, and it was talking deeply about expectations in blended families. And a lot of times we jump into it just completely rose-colored glasses and just really don't see some of these problems coming. So, all right, you ready to kick it off? Mm-hmm. All right, you ready? Yeah. Look like you're about ready to swing on somebody with this <laughs> lovely arm of hers. So yeah, her like shoulder is like completely messed up. She goes for an MRI soon. So we're going to get it all figured out and find out she's like bionic and we just didn't even know it the whole time. <laughs> I've just been in constant pain for yeah. a week and a half. She so. has. Pray for Christy and her arm. <sighs> yeah. All right. So the very first thing we want to talk about today is why don't they like your kids? I yes. think that's a great question to ask yourself. Why don't why doesn't my spouse, my new spouse, like my kids? Or you may just feel like they don't like them. Maybe they're just yelling at them all the time. So True. it's just a hard <laughs> question to ask yourself. Like, why don't they? Are I wrote some things down for myself so I could remember. Because there's two sides to this that you need to actually be honest with yourself. Are your kids spoiled? Are they entitled? Are they not treating your spouse with respect because they feel that they don't have to? Or is your spouse jealous? Maybe they don't have kids of their own. Are they jealous? Are they struggling because with their own personal demons because they would like to have kids of their own and they're, you know, the bonus parent. 
are you too protective over your kids and they feel like they can't say anything to your kids. So they're actually uncomfortable in their own home because they're not allowed to share feelings about your kids at all or feeling that your kids are being disrespectful to them. Those are questions that you need to ask yourself. And if your kids are spoiled and entitled or allowed to get away with things, or maybe you just don't discipline them at all, that's stuff that you need to consider as the parent. Yeah, I think it's really easy for us to look at somebody else's kids and then say, I would never let my kids get away with that. Right. But in reality, we're letting our kids get away with this stuff all, all the time. And I think it's so important that that's why we always say that we need to file the hierarchy of what God says for the family. Yeah. And that is so important in blended families, even as hard as it seems, it's why it's important. So in the beginning, it's really important that you, you know, take your take your spouse's side first and say, yeah. okay. You know, I'm not going to jump on my kid's side, even though it seems unfair right now. I'm going to jump on my spouse's side and then I'm going to have a good conversation and get to the bottom of it. Like, okay, why is it that my spouse is having a hard time with my child? Like, mm -hmm. let's figure it out. Now, that doesn't always mean that the child is in the wrong. I mean, sometimes the, the, the other parent is in the wrong and that's very possible. But like Christy said, there's other things maybe going on. There's underlining issues that you need to get to the bottom of it. And that your child and your spouse are not going to be able to solve those problems. They just can't. It's, it's not how it works in blended families. You have to solve the problem here and then carry it out to the children inside the home. Because a lot of times kids do not respect the other parent. You know, we're going to talk about that in a second, but they don't see the other parent as a parental figure. So they carry out things completely different to that person in being spoiled or too outspoken. And you feel like, oh, you know, I feel bad for my kid because they're part of this family now. And I'm going to allow them some leeway to be mean and nasty, you know, and I'm going to kind of stay out of the way because I already feel bad. And you can't allow that to happen. It's just going to create a lot of tension between you and your spouse and your and your children and your spouse. Well, the honest answer too is the bio parent is going to bridge the gap regardless of what it is. Yep. So if you feel like your spouse is being too hard on your kids or not treating your kids correctly, that doesn't have anything to do with your kids actually. That has everything to do with your marriage and stuff that you guys have to work out behind closed doors. Now, if your kids are being the disrespectful kids, you need to support your spouse in that aspect. And some ground rules need to be set up on how they should speak or treat or talk to them uh, to your significant other. That you guys need, can go behind closed doors and say, okay, if they're disrespectful, what do you feel like is the correct punishment? You know, in our case, Josh was the stay at home dad and <clears throat> you know, 50% of the kids that were in the home were mine. So yeah. we had four kids, two were mine, two were his. And if he, I'm at work and he's disciplining my kids, we needed to work out, which we didn't in the beginning. We did not. So my kids, you know, would be telling their dad, big Josh is mean to me. You know, he's just mean to me. He doesn't treat me right. And then my ex-husband's calling me like, you're not there. You don't know what he's doing and all this stuff. I mean, come to find out he's just putting him, them in the corner like every other 10 minutes because my kids were just like super hyper all the time. But that still needed to be talked out and worked out. Like, listen, you know, make them write sentences or make them. So then I still am trusting my spouse because I married him. I need to trust him. I am on the same team as him. Whether we're a blended family or not, spouses and marriages, you're the same team. So you need to have clear cut guidelines on what that needs to look like for your kids. You can trust that. Yeah, I think if we went and we did like took a poll, right? So we went to like a Facebook group to like blended families and we took a poll and we said, in all honesty, uh, women, you know, how, how, how often do you think that your new spouse is mean to your, to your children? And I bet every one of them would probably speak up and say, yeah, yeah, he's mean. He's mean. And we have to understand there's a lot of things going on here. Number one, the guy feels like he needs to move in and become an authoritative role, right? I'm the man, I'm the leader of the home. I need to get this right, which is not right. How it needs to be done needs to be done differently, right? He is the leader of the home. There is things, but in a blended family, it's not like a nuclear family. It's not like we have to understand there's different ways to go about it. So guys need to say, okay, wait a minute. This isn't like my job. Like I'm supposed to come in and be the rule. And we have a whole thing we did on parenting styles. You know, this is a parenting style issue too, but the guys don't need to come in and be the iron fist and be like, I'm going to straighten these kids out. So these kids act like my kids because I understand that's why she's smirking because that's, you know, that's kind of no, what I tried to do to no, a certain degree. I have a point. 
Okay. But, uh, you know, it is to a certain degree, it's like, no, I'm going to run this household the way that it should be ran. And so what ends up happening is the guy ends up being a lot harder on, you know, the woman's kids because they don't act the same way, even if though they may or may even act better, you know, in those situations. So I think it's important why we say put the spouse first to have those discussions to get that type of stuff worked out. What's your point? My point is the nuclear families, not always, but the majority of the time, the man is the iron fist. I mean, we all grew up with the mom that was like, just wait until your father comes home, you know, and the kids were like, no, no. So that's what makes it harder in blended families and nuclear families. The majority, I don't need the women coming on here being like, not me. I'm the iron fist. And okay. I'm, I'm talking about the majority, the majority of even nuclear families. The dad is the iron fist. Doesn't have the patience, doesn't have the, yeah, the loving thing. So in a blended family, it makes it even harder because men are typically the tougher, more diplomatic one in the family. And especially when you're dealing with younger kids, if their biological dad is still in the picture, they can go back and tell him. And in that bio dad's defense, he's not here. He doesn't know exactly. And kids can embellish. And so that's why you and your spouse have to be on the same page with the things because the stepdad's probably feeling a little weird too. Like it is his home. He's the man of the home. God has designed it that way. God, husband, wife. So he needs to be allowed to be the leader of the home. You have to support that decision, but you have to be confident and agree with how he's going to be disciplining your kids. Again, that goes back. It's a marriage thing. It's a marriage thing. As long as you guys can work it out. Yeah, it always is. You know, so you have to ask yourself, the first question to ask yourself is why Why? don't they like my kids? Like what is going on right now? And I, I bet you nine times out of 10, it's not that they don't like each other. It's not that we have a problem with each other's kids. It's that we have a problem with the way things are being handled. And that is a marriage problem. That's not a parenting issue. So that's number one. Maybe your kids are brats. And then, I mean, kids are brats to a certain degree. All kids are brats. And we, as bio parents, we put up with a lot of garbage. We like, Oh, our precious little baby. Well, not, you know, no, your kid's a brat and your kid is hateful and mean. Well, you see it differently. You do. Like if my kid did something and your kid did the exact same thing yep. five months later, I wouldn't feel the same about it yes. just naturally, not on purpose. Yeah. Like if your kid would do something, I'd be like, oh my gosh, that little heathen. I cannot believe. But if my kid did that, I'm like, oh, he's probably struggling. Yeah. Well, you know, he's he's probably, tired. You know, yeah. You know, it's just the way that it is. It is just it's it's true, the isn't way it? that it is. It is. And that's why it's important that you slow down and you talk to your spouse about it. You know, if you see that your spouse is that you feel being mean now, it, it, a lot of times we have to be very careful that because being mean is very subjective. Yes. You know, like, oh, you're being mean. Like, I'm not being mean. You I'm may talking. think they're being mean because you don't discipline your kids at all. Yeah, right. And that's true. Right. And that's the whole that's the whole point, though, is you have to be open minded and be like, no, we need to have continued discussions about this. You may not solve it in one discussion, but make sure that you you don't keep telling yourself, you know, uh, they hate my kid. This person hates my kid. They love me, but they hate my kids. And that's not it. It's a big communication issue is what it comes down to. Well, and it also goes back to if you guys are in your marriage and you don't allow your spouse to have a say. Like if it's something continuously, like it's all the time, if it's all the time your spouse is upset by the way that you're, what you're allowing your kids to get away with or the way that you're disciplining your kids, that's a huge thing. Like it's not fair. Already I screenshotted something as uh, a step parent uh, and to keep in my phone today, cause we just shared it on one of our pa- our pages, but you're already grieving some, it says, you know, being the bonus mom or dad sometimes means you don't get the first seat at the table and you'll have to grieve this. And it is true. The step parent already doesn't have a seat at the table. It's the bio parents job to say, this is my marriage. My marriage comes yeah, first. So true. This is our household. Mm. And if I, my spouse is constantly upset because of the things my kids are getting away with, that is a me problem then. If it's, it's what we do consistently that counts. And if it's a constant thing, that's me then. And that's something that we need to work out because my spouse should have a say in what ha- affects my household when it comes to my kids. Yep. So. So the second thing we really want to talk about when we talk about like 
I don't, I don't like my stepkids is we really need to discuss the word respect. Oh yeah. I love this one. Respect. I love it. We actually did such a good job after probably the first year in our home because our exes tried to tell our kids so much and make our kids disrespect our home so much yeah. because they hated the fact that we were together that when we finally, it took us about a year when this is when we came up with the chore board uh, and this is the things when we sat down, we finally sat down, we started having family meetings and we started telling the kids like, listen, you don't, we're not saying that you have to, he, he told his kids, I'm not saying you have to love Christy. Like you love your mom. And I'm not saying you have to love big Josh. Like you have to love him. We're not saying that, yeah. but you will respect yep. if you will not be disrespectful in this house. If you do something that requires a punishment, these are the punishments. You know, we've created the whiteboard. So it was clear as day. Everybody was on the same page. If you are mouthy, if you slam doors, if you are doing things that are disrespectful to this home, you will be punished. Now, if you want to be angry, you are little humans. Okay. So if you get in trouble and you want to be angry about something and you're mad about it and you want to go to in your room and just be mad, that's fine. Mm -hmm. But you won't slam doors. You won't say things that are disrespectful. That will not be done. Yep. And that was a huge turning point in our family unit. It was the respect thing. Yeah, it was because it's super easy to not like somebody else's kids. It's super easy when you're in the store and you see a kid that's being a brat or being doing something mm -hmm. to you or you're at a, you know, an extended family gathering and like one of the cousin's second friends or whatever has a kid there and he's being nasty and you just want to go up and spank that kid. You just want to spank that or kid. Or punch him in the face. Or punch him in the throat. Depending on his size. A hard time breathing. So <laughs> it's, it's, it's really understandable to say, hey, I don't like this kid because this kid doesn't respect me. Well, if you feel like, and this is also subjective, you have to make sure that your your spouse and you are on the same page when it talks about respect. Like Christy said, we used to allow our kids to be upset and mad, but there's rules that come with being upset and mad. You know, a lot of times uh, I've watched parents and I grew up this way too. My parents would be like, smile. You need to put a smile on that face. Mm -hmm. No, I don't care if my kids cry. Smile. I'll give you something to cry about. Yeah. I'll make you cry more and then tell you not to cry. Yeah. And that's so, but the thing is, is respect comes with rules, right? Like you want to be mad, be mad. Yeah. But go to your room and be mad. You're not going to slam things. Yep. You're not going to, you know, you're not going to say nasty things. You're not going to do these things. And when we do, it's so much easier for our stepkids to aim that at us. Yeah. Right. Because they're looking at a place to take anger out. We're the first target for them, no matter what. I mean, it was either, it was either us, like me, or it was like my children is yeah. where the stepchildren would take it out on. So respect has to be a major key thing. And if your spouse is comfortable with the amount that your child is enforced to be respectful because of you, uh, it really changes the way that you feel about your stepkid. It does. It alters it completely. Mm -hmm. And the kids need to feel safe to come and talk to you about the step parent if they're upset about something. They, you want them ultimately to end up being comfortable talking about it in front of the step parent, but they need to feel like you will at least hear them out. The majority of the time, kids don't know how to process, you know, adult feelings, right? And their, their feelings get hurt easy, easy. And they feel like the step parent doesn't have the right because yep. it's not their mom or dad. So explaining it to them like a babysitter or an extended family member, like an aunt and an uncle, you are to be respectful to adults as the parental figure in the home. And that is biblical, you know, respect your elders type of thing. And we're trying to do the right thing by you. That is important because the kids will need to express those feelings. If they feel like I can never go to my mom and talk to her about how big Josh makes me mad, then they will never talk to me about it. I don't think that my kids ever did feel like that they were allowed to do that. Fortunately, he was the one that was at home with them mm. the majority of the time. And we worked through all these things and he wanted to be a better man. And we want to put God at the center of everything. So eventually it got to the point where they will say something to him, even in front of me, if they were upset about something yep. and then he'll work it out with them or he'll see that they're upset about something and he goes and he addresses it with them and works it out with them and explains it to them and helps them walk through the process. Mm -hmm. He has a lot of patience when it comes to that. I don't, especially when it comes with kids. I struggle with that. Like I want to go to them and say, what are you feeling? And they start telling me some sob story about that is childish and immature. I'm like, I don't care. Like suck it up. Life isn't fair. You know? And so that was the face she uses too. 
So everybody's clear. So he was a lot more patient about it. And I loved that about him. Uh, he's that patient with me, you know, when it come to came to his kids. So, but respect, I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. When people say respect has to be earned. No, that is not what God called us to do. God did not say only respect people that respect you. That is not what it's called to do. And so when we're teaching our kids, we need to be teaching our kids. You respect that person. No matter what. No matter what. I mean, we're not talking about the extenuating circumstances of somebody's being beat right. or someone is in a life threatening situation. Right, right. The majority of families, you will respect that person. That is what we're called to do as Christians. No. Yeah, I'm going to read what Stacy wrote because I think this is really powerful and I think it's important. One of the first things I said to the boys was that they already have a mom and I'm not trying to be their mom or replace their mom. Chrissy says this all the time too, just like Stacy's saying, it's important that our children know that. They'll want to respect us if they don't think that we're trying to take place of the other parent, right? Of their other bio parent. We're not trying mm -hmm. to take that place. It 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 offers them up a gift of saying, hey, it's all right. Like, I know my place and I'm not trying to take over this, you know, but that doesn't mean that you get the right to disrespect me. And that's why having healthy conversations with your spouse and working out what is considered disrespect and both agreeing upon that and then allowing the bio parent to tell the children with you present, like, okay, these are the things that are disrespectful and these are the lines that you can't, you can't cross. And so... Uh, that sets up a healthy boundaries and healthy uh, rules for, for you and the children going into it and moving forward. So it's important. Respect has to be had. It really mm -hmm. does. Mm -hmm. Has to be yeah. had. All right. The third thing we want to talk about uh, when it comes to saying you don't like your stepkids is you have to decide together. You mm -hmm. have to make a decision together. Yeah. And when it comes, I think it's most important when it comes to the rules of the home and the discipline of the home. You have to be able to say, okay, if you feel like your stepchild has been disrespectful to you, you need to talk it out with the parent. And I know that seems dumb in the beginning. Like some people want to just be prideful about it and say, I'm the adult and I can tell for myself whether this kid's being disrespectful and I'm going to take care of it. That isn't a proper healthy way. If you want your family to succeed, you're going to put in the hard work and you're going to do the things in the beginning that it requires. And it took a lot of bathroom talks for us, for me to take him in the bathroom or him to take me in the bathroom and be like, listen, that I do not appreciate that. How are we going to work this out? And eventually, after you have so many of those, it does become a routine then. It does become mm -hmm. an expectation. You don't always have to have those talks forever, but you need to in the beginning. A lot of times, every time you feel disrespectful, you have to do that if you want you guys to be successful. Yep. And if you're not willing to put that work in, you need to question yourself. Like, what's wrong with you? Do you want your family to be successful or not? Do you want to get divorced again? I mean, is that really what you want? Do you want to just be like, oh, no, things are going my way. I'm just going to get divorced. I've done it once. I'll do it again. God forgives all sins. <laughs> no. Like, you need to make sure that your marriage is successful. You have to. And it is. I love decide together. And I think that's something that you should always say. Am I making a decision? Okay, I need to decide together. Like, it should be something we constantly repeat to ourselves. And so something is... What's going on? My arm. Oh, you keep looking back that way. Yeah, I think I'm there's something like, is there a ghost in here? And I just no. don't know it. I don't know what's happening. Don't right address now. it. Just go. <laughs> well, keep looking. My arm like is hurting. Like she's looking behind us like we're driving in a car. If you're listening to this, I'm sorry. Because you would have <laughs> never saw that and you would have never known. <laughs> anyway, so decide together is an important thing. And I think it is something that we have to constantly remind ourselves that the decisions that we normally are able to, to make in a, in, in a nuclear family, a lot of times parents are like, it, it's so much different in a, in a nuclear family. The decisions are different, are handled differently. But in a blended family, it's like you always have to decide everything together. Mm -hmm. And if you don't do that, there creates this major amount of tension. So if you feel like the, the other parent is parenting their kids and making all the decisions and you don't feel like you're part of that, you automatically have yeah. this feeling of disconnect with everybody, yeah, including true. your stepkids. So making sure that everything is being decided together is so, so important. That is a big part of something that, you know, we're in the midst right now of creating a course that people can take that it's what we call 
before blending and be able to go through it before you blend. And that's a big part of it saying mm -hmm. you guys got to get on the same page and decide that we're going to talk about and decide on everything together. I understand it's your kids, but this is our family and this is what we're creating. And we need to make sure that these decisions are done together. Even with the good together. things though, too. So when Josh and I first started dating, his daughter, I think was like a junior or a sophomore. I don't remember, but Freshman, maybe. we got her a brand new iPhone and we got her this really awesome outer box case that had the pink, like camo, not camo, but like, I don't know. It was kind of like camo, like woodsy looking thing that she wanted. And we bought it for her. And then I'm at work. And he drove up to her school the next day. He went and picked it up, drove up to her school and gave it to her at the school. And this was when we very first were together. And he texts me. He's like, oh, man, Jordan loved her present. I took it up there and gave it to her. And I'm like, what? I, I didn't get to like, I would want to be a part of that. I would want to give her the present. I would want to see her reaction. And, and he was like, oh, sorry. Like, he didn't even think about it. It's just what he normally would have done. It's just what he did. And I could have chose to we could have fought for days and weeks about that. I did voice that I was mad about it. And I'm like, you know, I was super hurt about it for a few days. I'm like, I missed the whole present. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but he was apologetic about it. And he's like, you know, that will never happen again. And it didn't, it didn't happen again. He always made sure I was able to be present when we gave gifts that were supposed to be from both of us to the kids. It is important. And it's weird because we don't think of things like that. I think to myself, she's at work. I'm available. I'm just going to take it and give it to her. I'm just going to drive it up and give it to her. But I wasn't thinking like our family. I was thinking my kid. And that's yeah. where the distinction needs to be made. Like, okay, you know, that creates a wedge. It can create a wedge, even not even on purpose, on accident, right. you know? And if you allow those gaps to be there, it's no different. And I don't want to get too deep into this, but it's no different. And we can talk about this on a different one, but about finances within your home. Ooh, it's like getting together and saying, we're just going to keep separate accounts, you know? there, And that's a whole different, right? We can chase that rabbit way deep in the hole. But yeah. uh, it, it's just little things like that that do make a difference in not allowing things to really come together and really crock pot together and really start to cook together. And that's one of them is making sure that you guys are together on all decisions. And maybe she wouldn't have cared, but I could at least have called her first and said, Hey, I'm going to run up and do this. And she'd be like, okay, cool. Or should have been like, no, which she would have been. No, I want to be part of that. And then I would have known, but I don't know that stuff unless we decide together. And so, you know, that way we prevent each other from getting upset at the kids when it's really, it wasn't even the kids. Unless fault. you're the female and then he's at work and you call and say, Hey, I'm going to run this up to, um, my kid. Is that okay? And then he says, yeah, that's fine. And then you're like, Oh, you don't care. You don't want to be a part of it. Cause that's the female. That's the female version of yeah. that. And they're like, I'm Crap. sorry. Yes. Yes. I'll be a part of it. I'm working. I don't have time for this right now. The, I'm just kidding. Got the trap set. Snap. <laughs> the limp home. All right, and for our fourth and final thing when it comes to you don't like your stepkids is did you actually for real lose your cool? So if you lose your cool, you still need to go apologize to the child. And I know that a lot of parents, myself included, until I got with him, didn't agree with that because I'm like, no, you do not apologize. These are just kids. <sighs> well, I had a hard time apologizing in general to anyone. So it was a huge growing for me, and for me, what helped the most is it is my job to teach my kids how to handle life in general. And you will lose your cool at some point in your life. And it's how you respond or what you do after you do that, that matters. Do you take responsibility? Do you make a sincere apology and really try again in the future to not do it? Or do you lose your cool all the time and then just say sorry and it means nothing to them? That's completely different. But you need to make a sincere apology with no buts on it and say, I should not have handled it that way. Now, if they say, okay, does this get rid of my punishment? That's where the butt can come in. Like you're getting the butt. No, you, you, it doesn't take away from your punishment just because I freaked out on you. Doesn't mean because you <laughs> stole something from the store that you're not grounded for two weeks. I should have screamed and yelled and did those things, but you're still punished. Do we have any examples of this situation? Yeah. <laughs> She's a big smile on her face. Yeah, so we talked about it, I think, last week or week before on our podcast. Yeah. And, you know, with Christy's son, we had to 
got woke up at two o'clock in the morning, had to go pick him up because he got caught smoking pot. And so we were like, had to go pick him up and we got in the van and instantly we got in the van. I freaked out all the way home. I just was screaming and yelling and I, I lost my cool. I lost my cool. And he wasn't my son, right? But I felt like it was embarrassing. I had every justification lined up. I It's super easy now to still feel like I'm justified, but it's wrong. It was wrong, right? So I had to go back first off and apologize to her about it and say, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have lost my cool like that. It wasn't right. But then I had to humble myself and go and apologize to him. Like what you did was not right, but the way that I handled it was also not right. And that's, that's good for us to make sure that our children know that we can go, even in an authoritative position, even as a parent, that we can apologize if we're do, handling things the way they shouldn't. Now, I will be the first one to admit, there's nothing like telling a child 15 times to do something, and every time it feels like they're not listening and it's intentional. And by the time you get to the 15th time, you have every reason and justification to scream and yell, but you don't. You don't. We're not making sure that the children understand things in a healthy way. They're not getting it for some reason, or we haven't set up punishments in a way that's yeah. being effective. So that's when we have to go back to our last point and we have to decide together. We got to sit back together as spouse, spouses, mm -hmm. husband and wife and say, hey, this isn't working. I'm not getting through and it's really starting to frustrate me and I'm on the verge of losing my cool. I'm about to freak out on this kid and I don't want to. Mm -hmm. So we need to talk about how can we handle this moving forward and you have to do that. It's hard, but losing your cool doesn't do anything but drive a bigger wedge between you and your spouse and your family. Yeah, and there's many more examples of me losing my cool, uh, not just with his kids, but with my own kids. And he helped me a lot to say, you know, you really should. Because he doesn't say anything. Even for my own kids, I have freaked out on Garrett more times than I would like to count. And he just stands there. He just stands in the kitchen. He doesn't say anything because he doesn't want to undermine me. And especially because it's not his kid. And then we'll be done. And of course, I go in the bedroom and then I'm crying because I'm so mad. I'm so hurt. And I'm so embarrassed that I let him like lose my get me to the point where I lost my cool like that. And he'll come in and I'll be like, was I in the wrong? You know, and there's been many times where he's like, mm, yeah, you probably should go apologize and handle it this way. And nothing is worse than that. When you're the parent and you're trying to inflict punishment on your child and then you have to go back and be the one to say, I'm really, really sorry. I shouldn't have yelled at you. And I have I have had to do that with his daughter. Yep. I've had to do that with his son. I've had to do it with my son and I've had to do it with my youngest son. Mm -hmm. I, I, I've gotten to the point. I've gotten a lot better over the years, but there was a, a the first couple of years, maybe not so much on his on his, his son because he was very protective of his son. And that's a whole nother episode. But on the other three kids, I would just freak out and then have to go back and apologize to them that I did that. I had a lot of growth though. Like we've shared before in our podcast, we're both recovering alcoholics. He was a year and a half sober when him and I got together and I still was in my alcoholism. So I had to learn for the first time in my life to not be on antidepressants to not be taking Xanax, to not be medicating myself with alcohol and to deal with hard emotions and be a parent on top of that, be in a new blended family, have mm. a newly found stepdaughter. So I was going through a lot of things and I was just like, like all the time. Yeah. But you always chose to grow though. And you're like, never made excuses for it. You right. always wanted to change for the better, which is really hard because it's so easy for us to make excuses. The one thing she's not sharing uh, that actually happened not too long ago is something happened between her and her eldest. And then she instantly called him into the bedroom and like had a private conversation with them. And afterwards she came up to me and she was like, man, that really went well. She's like, I apologize to him. Like I shouldn't have freaked out on him. And then he started getting super emotional and stuff and saying, you know, mom, I've really been sick lately, yeah. you know? And then we ended up taking him to the doctor and he lost like 30 pounds, which he didn't have 30 pounds to lose. And then he had this huge issue. And so it really was awesome. So, and it wasn't like her and I had to have some type of discussion that time and be like, Hey, you really need to go talk to him about that. She didn't, she just did it. She's like, listen, she had him calm in the room and she apologized to him. And then that really opened up some opportunity for her to really talk to him on a whole different level. And that was yeah. awesome. That was really awesome. Yeah, he doesn't cry. My oldest doesn't cry very often. and Well, none of the kids really do. But yeah. uh, he actually started crying and breaking down and was saying that he just is sick all the time. And yep. he was really nervous about it. And he had been telling us he had a hard time 
eating. His stomach was upset a lot, but we didn't realize the severity of it until he really started breaking down a lot. And then he took his shirt off and yeah. it was like, he looked anorexic. Like so he'd been in a POW camp or something. Yeah. <laughs> like it was so crazy. my actual apology to him opened up a chance for him to sit just with me and yep. cry and really open up to, you know, it, he wasn't even worried about that. I yelled at him. He was struggling with his own stuff and he wasn't talking to anybody about it or telling us how bad it was. Yeah. And it really brought healing. I mean, he's gaining weight now, so that's good. And it's important. Everybody knows in a blended family that in the beginning, okay. And this is something you mature through, but in the beginning, you have to make sure that you talk to your spouse first about all these things in the beginning. But as time goes along and we've been, Chris and I've been together for more than 10 years now. Now, if I have a problem with one of her sons, I go talk to them Yeah. because her and I have already ironed out the details of the way that we handle things, the way that we do things. Like we have a family, like we have a family. We know, understand the rules very well. All of the children understand us. We understand them. So, you know, once you get beyond a certain level, you know, Christy's not worried about me punishing her kids. Mm -mm. Like we don't even punish our kids. Okay. Let's just be honest. Right. <laughs> we it's, don't anymore. We're beyond all that. Right. They're big. Right. They're huge. They're bigger than us. Right. It's there's punishment. It's I actually gonna be said that as a point. joke to one of them the other day. I think it was Garrett. <laughs> like it, he's 19 years old and he said something. He's graduated high school. You know, he's whatever. And I'm just like, well, if you don't do it, I'm going to ground you. You know, and I said it as a joke, but he's like, you're right. Yeah. You know, type of thing because no. No, but it's still like, there is still situations where we have to have conversations. And now it's just like, Christy will just call my son up and have a discussion with them. Like she doesn't need to preempt me and say, Hey, I'm going to call your son. Just letting you know. I mean, she always tells me stuff anyway. And I do the same with her just out of respect of our marriage and our, our relationship and our family. Mm -hmm. But as time goes on, there's a lot less of this stuff that you need to do. But if you do it in the beginning and you do it well, then you build trust within each other. And then you don't have to worry about not liking your stepkids are feeling like they're, they're they're a child that you can't like, you know? And mm -hmm. I think that's really what it comes down to. You really feel like you're in a position to where you don't have any power and you have no control. And so then the child's allowed to treat you any way they want. So you really don't have a healthy relationship with them. So that's something that has to be had over time. It takes time to do that. Yeah. And if you, it should get to the point where you guys are like, I am tired of having this conversation. Yeah. Because we said that so many times, so many. so many times where I, I would let something go for a week or two weeks because I'm just like, I just don't want to have the conversation right now. I don't. And I know eventually that we need to eventually yep. have it instead of pushing it down and pushing it down and letting it fester until I blow up. But I'm not prepared to have the two or three hour bathroom discussion right now. And then eventually, and he typically could tell. And then eventually when it would come out and I'd be like, we need to talk, you know, we'd get in the bathroom and he'd be like, I knew it was coming. I knew it was coming. Mm. I was just giving it time to come. And I'm just like, I am sick of having this conversation, the same conversation over and over. But look, it's, I mean, in the grand scheme of life, five years, six years of putting in all that hard work is not, it's not that too much. It's not too much to ask. It's easy to say no. Yeah. For, yeah, that's true. Yeah. But looking back on it, it's like, you have to remember why you started. You have to remember to see the light at the end of the tunnel. And when you're in the thick of it, it's a lot easier said than done, yeah. but that's why it's important to have community. So you can see people that have went through it and say, Oh man, I can, I can, Ooh, I can feel where you're at. And it's so just icky, Yeah, but you will get through it. Sharing hope. Yeah. You will get through it. You will get through it. You yeah. will get through it. You just can't give up. Yeah. And I want to encourage whoever's on, whoever gets an opportunity to listen to this. If you are struggling with liking your stepkids, I encourage you to try and change your attitude about it. Yeah. Honestly, remember that we are the adult. We are the adult. The children is most likely, if the, maybe they are spoiled, maybe they're brats, maybe so, maybe so. But what a great opportunity for you as a parent to help offer some real good guidance in this situation in a healthy way. Yeah. You know, not in, I'm going to take it, take this role into my hands and do something about it, but an opportunity to really come to your spouse and really come together and make some real good, healthy decisions moving forward. That's going to benefit your family as a whole, you know? So be encouraged by other people's stories like us. Yeah. It took us years to figure it out. It doesn't always take that long for some. It takes no. longer. Yeah. You know, we don't know, but be encouraged that if you do the things right in the beginning, even though it's hard, difficult, ugly, uncomfortable, if you do it anyway, it will pay off. It pays off big. If you just put in the work and the time early on. I can tell you that yeah. the people that are more humble and don't struggle with pride, it comes a lot quicker. 
So the more prideful you are yeah. and the less humble you are, the longer it's going to take. Because that's any marriage, let alone a blended family. And both of him, both him and I were very stubborn. We are very stubborn people. And we can struggle with our own pride of just wanting to be right or wanting to be heard. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I know it's cliche, but a lot of times we listen to respond and not listen to understand. And that is a huge key thing with your spouse. You really need to be listening to them to understand their viewpoint. Put yourself in their shoes. What are they dealing with? And if they do have kids, reverse it. What if their kids had did that to you? How would you respond? And don't lie to yourself. Yeah. Be honest. So you, that's an empathy and an understanding and wanting your marriage to be successful and your family to be successful and to have those kids grow up to be God loving, God fearing members of society. It's important. You want your children to go up and to grow up and understand that marriage is compromised, families compromise. Yes. And it doesn't mean compromise in spite of, right? We don't have to treat ourselves that way to say, well, my compromise is just be able to let this other person and their kids do whatever it is that they want. No. It's understanding healthy conflict resolution, yeah. having healthy communication and saying, hey, we can become, we need to meet in the middle on this. Where is a middle? Because typically in a situation of parents, one of them's, one person's more aggressive than the other. Okay. Unfortunately, in our situation, we're both pretty darn aggressive. Okay. We I are. I was just thinking like, who? Yeah. Ours? We, we are both pretty aggressive, you know, but some, but, but the beautiful thing that God has really shown us in our own marriage is each of us are soft at different times in our relationship yeah. and we've been soft at different times and it's been super helpful and we've we've respected each other in that journey so it's you know understand that what god's trying to tell you in your current family don't think that it's about the other children and that you don't like them and that you dislike them think about what it is that you can pour into into your marriage and into your family to make things work in a positive way and that's typically some form of compromise mm -hmm. right yes i agree